respond. At 7.55, let's keep it going in the Zoom room where we have the Chief Medical Officer of the Department of Public Health and Social Services, Dr. Felix Cabrera. Good morning, Doc. Sorry about that. No, no worries. Uh, good morning, Chris. Good morning, Bree. Good morning. Jason. Uh, thanks for joining us in the KUAM uh, News Zoom Room 756. I guess we'll just first start with the variant. Have we got anything back from the CDC um, about the variant and these test results that we sent off? You know, uh, disappointingly, we um, uh, they they are behind in their um, in running the the test and giving us a, a, a sequence results. And so, uh, but you know, we're still grateful that they that they've taken our samples. Uh, we've actually sent out three different uh, shipments to them. Uh, so not so, and we're still waiting results for even the first one. But uh, nonetheless, they um, they are uh, you know, basically samples, uh, and based and what I mean by that is that. They're giving us uh, uh, stamps and time also of when uh, these samples were these these specific um, uh, COVID uh, viruses were here. We know we'll, we will even know what their sequences are, and if there are any other strains that are identified later, we can always reference them. And so, uh, so even though they're they are uh, you know late, uh, it's they're still extremely valuable, and we, we appreciate that they're they will eventually be sequenced. The samples from the second and third, are they also a batch of 20 each? Uh, the second one was a batch of 20 as well. Uh, and the third one was a was a batch of, I think, 10 or uh, around 10. And the good thing is, I mean, the, 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 the reason why it's less is because we've had less COVID. And so uh, there's less that actually met the threshold that we could actually send. Uh, there's a certain lab uh, threshold that we have to meet before we send so that they can actually meet the sequencing guidelines. And so, um, so that's uh, that's why it's less. Is there any m- movement or discussion or even a need to try and uh, 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 be able to do this genomic testing here on, on Guam? Or well, is that it's even- really, you know, if we, when I was in, I think undergrad. Um, yeah, when I was an undergrad, that was the first time that the human genome was sequenced. Mm-hmm. And that was a tremendous uh, leap in, in science. And so to sequence um, multiple viruses, you know, in a, in a streamlined fashion, that's that's a big undertaking. And that, that's why it's um, not something that's typically done there. Um, you know, other countries are way ahead of the United States in, in, in doing that for like Australia, like sequences half of their viruses. Mm-hmm. Uh, that they identify. Of course, they don't have that many, but they are able to do that. And so, but unfortunately, no, there is no, uh, 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 we don't foresee doing that locally, uh, just because the, the tremendous resources that we will take for that. Okay. Well, let's move on to the other V word, uh, vaccines. Uh, was it today is the day that we were crossing our fingers to get the uh, uh, next shipment to the next allotment is it here or is it arriving later today uh you don't have to cross your fingers anymore because last night we got 14,200 moderna vaccines that arrived in good condition all right so we are extremely excited about that um you know it's um gosh when you, you just think about that that many for just moderna and then when you when uh, and then what we're expecting, uh, likely even today, uh, is Pfizer's shipment of 21,060 vaccines. And so, man, you go from like, you know, it's like you go from being starving here to, you know, a to a smorgasbord, <laughs> whatever the word is. <laughs> and then, and then on top of that, then the cherry on top of that is Johnson and Johnson coming as well. And we don't have an expected time of arrival, but we're expecting about 1,300 uh, vaccines uh, of, of Johnson and Johnson, and so that will probably uh, arrive here within you know less than a week from now, and that's you know only gonna you know really uh, allow us to 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 offer more and more and more people vaccines, mm-hmm. and so we're really excited about that. Yeah, I'm glad uh, you mentioned Johnson and Johnson because that actually was one of the things I was going to ask you about and i wanted to talk about this is a one and done uh uh shot right yes it is a one as of right now it's a one and done shot they are looking at what it might mean to get a booster uh so so those studies are still ongoing and we'll you know maybe find out something about it in the next uh several months 
but right now it is one and done. Uh, the the key, the absolute key part here is like never mind talking about the efficacy with uh, getting COVID ninety five percent versus seventy two percent. Uh, you know, between Johnson and Johnson versus the Moderna and, and Pfizer one. What we need to keep clear in our mind is that the that the, th the one thing that all three of them have in common is that they are virtually 100% effective at preventing hospitalization and or death from COVID. And that's what we care about, right? Yeah, you can get COVID, you'll get sick, and, and, and you may, you, you, you know, and most people will recover from it. But what we really care about is not flooding the hospital and people not dying from COVID. And Johnson & Johnson does it just as effectively as Moderna and Pfizer. So if I walked into UOG and they said, and it's like, I want my first dose, um, I'm eligible. And they said, oh, well, all we have is Johnson & Johnson for that. I, I personally take it. I'll take it. I, if it was my mom, I say, mom, take it, you know, and my aunt, my whatever, take it because it's, it's, that's what we care about. And that's, um, and, and we, we, and the, there's very good data that supports that mm -hmm. even with what's known right now about certain, um, uh, variants that are out there that the, the lie, the, the real world data is showing that it is, uh, that there are, uh, the, the, the protection is, is consistent. And so we, we, we are very, very encouraged by that. Doc, I, I just wanted to ask, uh, because there was a story that came out of um, NBC News. Uh, in the Bay Area. In the Bay Area. A Catholic Church voices uh, concerns about Johnson & Johnson uh, vaccine. And, and just, I guess, if you, if you could maybe address this. Uh, there's controversy within the Catholic Church after a prominent association of bishops raises moral questions about the newly approved Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Uh, this is local parishes in the Bay Area are trying to overcome several obstacles of getting their members vaccinated. Uh, the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops claim the vaccine is linked to cells derived from aborted fetal tissue. And that raises moral concerns because of the church's obvious opposition to abortion. Yeah. So I, that's news to me. Um, I'm not aware of the, the cell lines that were used in any fashion. Um, what we do know that's different about the Johnson & Johnson uh, vaccine versus um, the Pfizer Moderna is that the, the basically the, the, the packaging of what really is effective uh, uh, in the vaccine is, is very different. It's actually an, in an, what's called an adenovirus, which is known to cause the common cold but in this case, it's a very inactivated adenovirus. So uh, it holds the genetic material that goes into your body and makes, and eventually you make the same M mRNA uh, that um, that creates the proteins. That's that spike protein on the on the, the coronavirus, and that's effective. Now, what may have been studies, and, and I'm only presuming here, purely presuming, because this you're just telling me this, and I'm just learning this about this uh, controversy. I presume that there may have been uh, fetal uh, uh, cell lines that were uh, that may have been part of the early parts of the research of this uh, process. Now, I, what I do recall is that uh, President George W. Bush was uh, the ones who said no more fetal cell lines, but the ones existing can still continue uh, and be replicated and, and be used for, for research purposes. So it's not like he, he, a very conservative president like him, he didn't ban all fetal uh, uh, cell lines. He just said, you know, uh, uh, basically that you, that will will stop. But what's in what's already in use can continue for for research purposes. And so I don't think that that has changed. I don't think that um, Obama or or Trump or or even Biden has changed any of that. Um, and so uh, because they're still very useful. So I so I'm not sure what the controversy is and and maybe it's best I stop speculating uh, on it, but I'm just trying to uh, just give a little bit of the science uh, that I do know about it. Okay, we, we, can we put, just put you on pause just oh, yeah, for a yeah, second? Oh yeah, Doc, stand by. Uh, Guys, KUM TV, thank you so much for jamming with us on a Friday. Bima Betness, there's a whole lot of great programming coming up, but there's some good stuff on the way here too. Mm -hmm.
Check out our Facebook Live uh, feed. There's an audio stream, Docomo Channel 10, and, of course, right here on the radio, The Breeze, 93.9 KUAM FM, Agatni Guam. My name's Chris. I'm Sabrina. Asajos! Bye. And we're back. Dr. Cabrera, as you were. Sabrina? Um, so, I, uh, yeah, I guess maybe we could follow up on that uh, a, a little bit later since you're just kind of uh, hearing about it right yeah, now and, yeah. and we just kind of sprung it on you. Yep. Uh, but uh, what I, you, you talked about the commonalities really about, you know, the, the vaccines and, you know, the one thing that it does is that it prevents hospitalizations, right, and uh, death. Uh, but I wanted to ask about, uh, you know, uh, are the, the side effects, are, are, they, are they different from the other two, just so that people kind of know what to um, My understanding is that it's actually very similar um, and that you, um, um, you know, you, you should expect the same uh, type of uh, response, immune response is, you know, you, you, side effects usually obviously has a negative connotation to it, but in this case, you're your immune response is going to be that you that your your body's you know going to work and is training to 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 fight COVID and so that part is um, I, I think should be welcomed uh, in a lot of ways and some people have asked like well should I take um, Tylenol or ibuprofen or naproxen to to combat some of these these uh, immune responses and I say well if you can bear with it you know. You know, try not try and not take him uh, because you're just blunting your body's ability to 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 do the right response. Um, same thing, by the way, with those who are trying to train, you know, you know, and, and lift weights and 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 do all that. If you take that, you're only blunting your body's response to to get stronger. That being said, uh, I took some naproxen when I had a headache after my second dose. So, <laughs> so hey, I'm being, hey. being honest. It, it was it was it was the point where I. It, have to do activities of daily living and when that when it comes to that point then you go ahead and take it uh but yeah so i'll just say that <laughs> what about uh like uh like age limit you know things like that like who who would you recommend more to uh, take it or who can't take they, it they're, yeah they're 18 and over for the johnson and johnson um but what's encouraging is that they started early their uh trials for children um, and they started it, uh, you know, quite early. So we actually may even get results for younger uh, uh, persons eligible for the Johnson and Johnson before we even get results for uh, uh, Pfizer or Moderna. So, so that's encouraging. And so, you know, again, uh, they they took different pathways. And and in all honesty, if Moderna and Pfizer were not even on the table, what Johnson and Johnson has done is just absolutely amazing. And, and it's something that we should be extremely excited about. And the way that they went about it also was was is, is extremely encouraging and amazing. And so so um, I, I'm saying all this to, to, to ensure that we really understand the value of having all three of these vaccines available to us uh, and that we are extremely, extremely fortunate. And the best thing about the Johnson & Johnson is because remember I talked about they have a different uh, packaging, uh, so to speak. That's why they can be stored in refrigerators they don't have to have these ultra cold, uh, you know, freezer storages. So that actually really improves the, um, the, the you know, how, how they can become available to not just, you know, obviously here in Guam, you know, we'll be okay, but can you imagine what, what that means for, for third world areas that don't have that type of refrigeration, uh, you know, uh, uh, capabilities, the freezer capabilities, I should say. Um, and what that really means because here on this globe, we are only going to be as weak as our weakest country uh, when it comes to the COVID fight. And so there is a resp moral responsibility for us to ensure that everyone gets this vaccine and, and it's become available to it. And and so, you know, yes, we are doing our part to, to get ourselves uh, fortified, so to speak, with the vaccine. But this process is going to go on forever. And I mean, not forever, for, for, for a long time. And and that eventually we're going to have to do our part to really stretch out and help other areas uh, get vaccinated as well. But we'll, we'll take care of the home front first. And, and you said 1,300, right, doses? Yeah, 1,300 is what's uh, what's slated to come to Guam uh, mm -hmm. first. And then in all like, and then they say 10, uh, 100 million uh, or so by the end of, um, um, sorry, let me just, I had something here where, 
Yeah, they said about 16 million that they'll have available toward the end of March. So if you do it proportionally, then that means Guam might get an additional about 8,000 toward the end of March. And then they are claiming a total of 100 million by the end of June. So for Guam, that means about, uh, about 50,000 doses. And what's really encouraging is that um, Merck, uh, Merck is a, a big pharmaceutical uh, uh, company and they abandoned their uh, COVID-19 vaccine uh, uh, efforts early on because the, the data didn't support that their, what their efforts were, were effective. But now that they've partnered with Johnson Johnson to help manufacture uh, the vaccines. And so that's really, you know, that's, I, I, I can't under, you know, I, I can't overstate the, how remarkable that is in that you have a major rival agreeing to help out Johnson & Johnson to make these vaccines and to produce them because they are the best persons to help them. And it's it's an agreement and that I think the White House themselves have, have helped broker. And um, and of course, they're not doing it for free. They're being compensated to do it. But but man, that it that's really a major act in solidarity for, for us to help, um, you know, really combat this pandemic. And so I really applaud them for that. Mm -hmm. And that's in about a week, right? You said uh, Johnson and Johnson should be that first shipment yeah. should be landing on on island. Um, mm -hmm. So still for next week, it's going to be the vaccination clinics uh, will resume over at the OG Cowell Field House, and that is only for the second dose. I want to make sure everybody is is clear. Yeah, we have a lot of catching up to do for those two second dose now. You know, again, a um, major, major, major appreciation for everyone's understanding uh, about the that that you don't have to have it exactly on on the day that it's due. That there is this buffer period, and we are still in that buffer period for everyone, everyone, except those who are purposely have not gotten the second dose. Uh, you know, when they were due long before all this uh, shortage, and so um there's a uh, plenty to do and they are our priority at this point um but we'll we'll get to them very, fairly quickly actually because um the the national guard is has been amazing uh in their their efficiency in giving out these vaccines and that and public health next week is going to be uh putting extra uh, uh su support to to ensure that we get everybody caught up uh and then very not you know uh, i don't know how many days after that but it's going to get to the point where uh, we'll, we'll obviously be offering uh, first doses for those who are eligible uh, and and even opening up the categories and the eligibility. Mm -hmm. I, I did want to also then uh, follow up on, um, uh, th there was a story uh, that one of our reporters did about this situation with a GDOE substitute teacher and she had gone to a private clinic, uh, had one of the rapid tests It was a positive for COVID. Her two children were also tested. Um, and then she went to S another private clinic and uh, did a PCR oh. test. That was negative. Then she did it again for a third time and it was negative. But this whole time she was, uh, uh, from what I understand, in isolation. But she got a call yesterday uh, saying, okay, so you're no longer in isolation, but your two children are because uh, your children were in contact with a positive, which was her but she said she wasn't positive so how yeah. do you guys uh, are you familiar with the the case yeah unfortunately <laughs> uh very unfortunately very familiar uh, and so I, i'll just say that um uh that um there is a legal matter in this and so there's a limit to what i can say about it uh but i will address things that have been said in the media uh and overall and that uh, I just, I, you know, let me just start out by just asking you, Chris and, and Bree, um, if you knew a teacher was symptomatic, came into a clinic and tested positive, doesn't matter what test, tested positive for COVID, what do you think public health should do with that, with that person? Well, obviously, um, isolation right isolation thank you and but, so we, but if she requested this i'd like to get retested okay yeah what would you so do? so the the default is to put in isolation and and to ensure the safety of the public right now there is recourse and we have this recourse that's set aside for those who are asymptomatic 
when they when they are asymptomatic uh, and that they are trying to shorten their isolation uh, time, which is 10 days at this point. And so the recourse is being tested, but there is very, we're very clear about how you get retested and you can't cut corners. One is that you have to have a negative test at least 24 hours after your first one, your positive test, I should say. And then you have to have a second negative test 24 hours after that. At that point, we are more, uh, at that point, we, we are more convinced that you're not infectious and therefore can decrease your isolation time. And only until then can you have a shortened isolation period. Now that's that case. Anybody that you've been exposed to when you're considered uh, in isolation because of a new COVID case, they're in quarantine. Quarantine is a different story. Quarantine is different requirements because quarantine, you, you don't know what's going to happen to that per to those people in quarantine, how they're going to respond. Are they going to become symptomatic? Are they going to be a delayed course? So, so those are two very different conversations and they need to be have they, they need to be, uh, uh, you know, discussed in, in different in scenarios. And so um, you, uh, I honestly have not followed very closely what's been said, all that in, in the media by uh, in this particular case, but what you had just shared um, is the case where eventually the, the protocol was followed and therefore uh, uh, this individual was award, was allowed to have a shortened isolation period. Are you guys? Are, are you guys uh, a public health um, receiving, I guess, uh, complaints or concerns about false positives? So, false positives are not dangerous. Mm -hmm. False negatives are the danger. Okay, we take we take any positive very seriously because of the risk that it may it may have not just for the like let okay we're obviously concerned about that person's well-being but but public health's responsibility is the entire public safety and so you know these processes have been in place we didn't just change it recently or anything like that this is why we're doing well right now you know the it, it's one of those things where like look at the scoreboard we are doing well because we follow our policies and because we, we put them in place and because we have expert opinions that that help guide us i'm an expert in some things and when i'm not i see other experts opinions uh and so that's the key part here and, and let me just be very clear here everyone's entitled to their opinions and there has been very vocal opinions about this including some medical persons but you're not entitled to your own facts. And that's very key here. And when, you're, when you try and say things and try and advocate for one person using incorrect facts, you put the whole community at danger, at risk. And that's a pattern that we've seen from this one particular physician. And this has been ongoing throughout the pandemic where he uses his this altruistic platform and all it does is actually put everyone else at risk and we saw this in toward especially toward the end of july and early august and what happened back then we had a spike we had a spike and i'm not saying that he caused the spike i'm saying that there that you can't contribute to anything that 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 pushes the spike up, that we as a community have to do our best to help ensure that we protect as many people as possible. Now, I know I'm, I'm getting, I'm, I'm on a soapbox here a little bit, right? And I'm seeing your, eye, your eyes get big. Oh, no, I've just something... never seen this side like of you. It. I like Woo! it, Doc. I like it. <laughs> I like it. No, this is really important here because I feel I felt warm. Guys, you know, he's talking I, about they, Dr. Shea. Back, in, back then. I felt Guam tremendously. And I think I think everyone here knows that I'm not afraid to say when we're when I, when I'm wrong or when I'm, we're losing 
back in October, I said we were losing against COVID. We were losing the fight. And it was true and it was real. And it was a wake up call to everybody. What happened after that? We turned stuff around, right? By Thanksgiving, our car score was below five and we were, we were doing well. And part of what is makes us get better is really recognizing where we where we need to improve. And, and that was very clear back in, in July and August in particular. And, and all this talks about, about trying to, to, to set people free uh, and be, and be, it's not about freedom and, and, and because it's about everyone else's freedom. And that when one person is a potential risk that we have to balance that with the community's risk. And, 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 and when you lose sight of that, and when some person wants to have the, the who is an extreme narcissist, let me say it again, a narcissist, by definition, will always use the, the, the soapbox they need to get that attention. And that's usually whatever's opposition to what the, the, the you know, is the leading uh, 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 word and, and, and consensus amongst, amongst uh, you know, those who are, are, are in the position of, of of actually making these decisions. And when you're not an expert, when you're not even the patient's primary care doctor, you don't really have a say in this. And, and that's what is important. We worked with this patient's primary care doctor. We worked directly with the, with that, with the primary care doctor. And, and we, we sought uh, his opinion. We sought his, his input and we don't, seek the opinions of, of, of non-experts um, on, unless they have a, a true community uh, voice and, and, and reason that has, that has valuable input. And without that, um, you know, the words are nothing. Right on. Sorry. Well, thank no, don't you. be sorry. Don't be sorry. You know, Dr. Shea's like a broken clock. I mean, the, what is that? They say the broken clock's right twice a day. I mean, I get what you're saying, Doc. I do also feel that um, he does say a lot of things just to kind of go against um, whatever the administration is uh, doing. But I mean, he but, has. But at the end, of, but at the same time, you know, this this uh, woman, the one that we're talking oh. about, she did reach out to him, yeah. um, seeking help and seeking answers, and so yeah, yeah and, he, and 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 that's and that's and, and she that's did that fine. because he's and, speaking out, so <laughs> she sees probably like, oh, yeah. this is someone I go to. Can I just re remind everyone how much he's pleaded that we stop quarantining travelers? <laughs> he imagine if he if we followed his opinions, and, and this has been going on, and and this is a person, and and sorry, this is now it's personal for me because he pers he makes these memes about me. He makes memes about my position. And this affects my family. This affects my all my relatives that are here on Guam, in Saipan, in, in the whole Mariana Islands. And um, frankly, I'm, I'm, I'm fed up with it. I'm absolutely fed up with it. And he needs to be called out. He keeps saying that, he, that he's been here on Guam for blah, 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 how many years. He's done all these blah, blah, blah stuff. But in the end, what has he done lately? And what does he do for the greater good? except for his self-interest and i'm sorry but he needs to be called out he's a danger to society he's a menace to society and he will be held accountable this is a this is something that is going to go to the guam board of medical examiners his conduct and his actions and he will be held accountable and 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 this is now my mission because it threatens public safety did you file the, the last thing I'll, did you file the complaint sorry? already we we will be writing a letter directly to the the chair of the uh, Guam Board of Medical Examiners, and so that's going to be a letter that's going to be uh, uh, drafted by myself and, and and a few other physicians as well. Doc, so are you uh, filing a complaint because he made memes about you, or just about no all the about, other things about, about setting? Is this okay? What did Twitter do to President Trump? Uh, I see. A clarification: no. Letter or com complaint? Same thing. Letter of complaint. Yes. Okay. Letter of complaint. Yeah. 
Yeah. Mad Doc, I've never I'm, seen these memes. I'm curious. Sorry? I've never seen these memes. Like, what, um, what, do, what do they say? Yeah, I've had them for, well, one is I'm blocked from all his social media. Mm. Myself. So where I get it from, my wife forwards it to me. My mom forwards it to me. How do you think that makes me feel as a professional who's trying to do his best for this community? And then he puts stuff about, about what my, what I, how much I make and, and that I should be fired or I should resign. But what people don't really understand here is that how much do you think it, it, it costs to go to medical school? How much do you think it costs to, to, to be a physician and to do the training that, that is necessary? And in the end, what, something I, 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 I resisted saying so many times here, but I'll say this, it was a pay cut to take this position and I do it with pride yeah. and I do it because it's important. And, All right, yeah. and but Doc, but Doc I, I know you understand that as a public employee, like people are free and that's tough when people go from like private to public, but, but you know was that people can talk smack about how much but you make the, and, and they can say whatever. You, saw the memes, you, you, you see what I mean. Um, you know, but, Anyway, I don't know. No, I, 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 I get what you're saying yeah. because, uh, like you said, like with issues with quarantine, you guys are just trying to protect the community. And, you know, you do have someone who uh, is a physician um, going against basically what you're what you guys are yeah. trying to do. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, I could see just let me play devil's advocate. I could see if he was like a physician who maybe specializes in something that's like respiratory or viruses or anything, but he's an ob guy, you know, I'm, I mean. Yeah, and we, we listen to many oppos opposing opinions, and these are from people who are w physicians that are very well-intentioned, and we really listen to them. Um, you know, the, the, well, I'm talking about local physicians, and we listen to them, we really take their points very seriously, they're members of the physician advisory group, um, and and we, we come up with a balanced, out, uh, you know, uh, recommendations for the governor, and 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 in the end that that's what's you know, that's what's given us the success that we have today, mm -hmm. and we got to maintain that. So what what are you guys going to ask uh, the Guam Board of Medical Examiners to do? Tell them to stop posting stuff on social media. I mean, what, what, <laughs> what are you going to be asking them to do? Re re revoke well, his license or what? Only well, post nice things. Well, all of those are good suggestions. <laughs> You're not going to say. No, I'm not. I mean, that's going to be ultimately up to them, mm -hmm. but it's just going to be a letter of concern that's going to be post that's going to be sent and 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 basically you know discussing what is the uh the concerns that not that you know the government of guam has uh in terms of of public safety you know we, we keep talking about public health but this is more about public safety uh overall um and the one thing uh, you know it's sorry i i do have to leave in in, in a yeah, minute yeah. here but yeah. i'm just going to share this one last thing here this picture right here that you guys see in my background. That's my dad. My dad passed away when I was 12 years old. He was the chief of police back in Saipan. And, and, but the title of, um, of, the, of the police department there is actually Department of Public Safety. And so he was the director of public safety at one point. And, and I hope that that term very dear to my heart. And all of a sudden I'm thrusted into this point where it's not, I'm not just you know, majorly involved in public health. I'm actually majorly involved in public safety at this point. And I feel I have a right to speak out um, and and a duty to speak out. And anybody that threatens that threatens me, threatens my family, threatens you, Bree, you, Chris, and your family. And that's something that's very serious. And and especially when it's done on, under the guise of altruism, when all of this is, is just, it's just maleficence. Man, Doc, I feel for you. I feel, I feel you. I can tell that you're really um, upset about this. Uh, and I get what you're saying. I feel like when you got a DR attached to your name, there's a certain 
sense of responsibility, right? I mean, I'm not coming down one side or the other, but that's kind of your argument is that people listen to doctors, and when you have doctors saying things that, that you guys feel are irresponsible, then... Um, yeah. Okay. okay. Th- thanks, yeah. Doc. Thank you. Sorry. Right. I know it was... No, no, no. It's that's fine. Yeah. It's all right. And, um, but, uh, we all but, reach you know, our limits, a, right? Yeah. We, we, we do, and, and this was my limit. I, you know, I, re- I really believe, and I'm sorry it's become personal, um, and I try to keep a professional tone at, at all yeah. times, And uh, but this is something that, that really is, can be extremely dangerous. Mm-hmm. And we know, and knowing what we've been through already, and what we can still potentially go through again, yeah. you know, we don't have enough people vaccinated here on Guam yet. We don't, we, there's still so many vulnerable people that we just, cannot bear this and we, we you know this cannot this this type of tone cannot exist here and and we have to speak up you know against it so thank you everyone thank you doc thanks doc all right there you go that's dr okay, felix be safe. you be too safe. have a good weekend he's the chief medical officer of the department of public health and uh, social services and his mom loves this show uh, oh jade we got something here oh, go ahead. Um, yeah well okay joseph you got me on a whoops Okay, I'm going to screen share this because uh, 